Um, are you, so we're going to get into um, the forge. So, you know, Black, Black Armory, Armory came out. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. exciting stuff, man. I am like really pumped about where we're going with these guns. They showed off some of the, you know, obviously when the, the pre-trailer, but then, you know, getting these new rolled weapons. And I feel like the, the, the weapon designers are getting some freedom to make some interesting um, damage choices on, on how mm -hmm. these weapons damage the, you know, the, the player or the enemy. And um, it's like leaning towards that direction where I always hope they would go uh, with just really crazy guns and, and, and all that stuff. How are you, have any of you guys gotten any like of the new weapons and that you can talk about? A few. Yes. Yeah. I many. haven't yet. I jumped into I the forge, been. got my butt kicked, and then was like, all right, I need, I need a little bit more time. <laughs> it, that was an interesting decision, right? Is to have okay. the you forge locked behind, you know, several hours of grinding. Even if you were max light at 600, when you enter the, the you know, the new, I, I don't want to call it a DLC because it's not a DLC, right? It's a the content you know, drop. It, content content drop. Um, but you're basically locked behind several hours of just grinding old content before you get to see the new content. Yeah, it, it took either you grinding a lot of your power level up to be able to do the content, or it took you having a very specific loadout almost. And you had you you had to go in with a set strategy if you were under level mm -hmm. uh, at the very start of that. And a strategy that you didn't know because it was brand new. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the strategy that came to guys, what do we usually do when something's too hard? We go to the back of the map and we use yeah, whisper. That's, okay, that's exactly yeah. what I thought. People that's were just true. like, yeah. oh, I'll just hide behind this rock the whole time. Oh, all right, we did it. Uh, it it's a different style of content drop than what we're used to, for sure, right? We're used to getting yeah. DLCs yeah. that are story right up front. Um, if you're not max light when you get into it, you'll be it by the time you get out of that story or shortly thereafter. Um, because, you know, there's a soft cap that'll kind of draw you up to where you need to be to kind of play the content. They didn't do that for this one. They left the soft cap where it was. And if you were, you know, like if you were 550, 560, 570, you had a significant climb just to get into the new content. And the only piece of new content right at the get-go is the first forge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a very different feel for a content mm -hmm. drop. It's super different. It's before it was like, here's a story. Uh, here's a little bit of strike, a little bit of crucible. Little, it was like a little bit of everything. Whereas now it feels really hyper focused on one thing. So Black Armory is let's expand weapons. And then Joker's Wild is going to be let's expand Gambit. So it feels it feels much more focused. And I actually really like them expanding the end game. Mm. Like, I don't care about the campaign. I don't even necessarily care that a strike is missing. But getting all of these new weapons that I can get, try and get really good rolls on and doing the forge. I didn't actually didn't know how much I would enjoy the forge, but I actually really like the forge. So it's you mentioned challenging. the things. Uh, it's challenging initially. And then that's really fun is figuring out how to do that when you're so under leveled. And then when you get a little bit higher level, it's fun because you can kind of just run around and kill things and mm -hmm. throw balls. And that feels fun because it's a fairly fast activity to just keep grinding. So I I actually really like you it. mentioned things missing have. things that are missing from this content drop that we would have expected from a DLC are it's a lot of stuff right is we're not it is quite a lot yeah there's no crucible maps that we know of there's no strikes that we know of there's no new patrol area there's no mm -hmm. real story I mean there's a little bit of a the small quest line with the black armory and uh, Ada who runs it but I mean it's there's not much there so really it it like it, it's solely focused on so adding more grind. grinders it's like yeah it's so, solely focused on that here's a like interesting story so i was at bungie at like really long time ago not not super long but a decently long time ago and i was this was when monster hunter world was like best thing ever and i was so excited and i loved it so much and i was talking to a few people there and i was like if you thought about doing like monster hunter type stuff where you go into the world and you have to get materials and then you have to make stuff and they're like actually yeah uh, Sort of, kind of, and I kind of feel like that's what the forge mm -hmm. is because we have to go and get these frames and we have to power them up by going to kill things, doing things specifically, and then we get to we forge have to go the to the weapon. Leviathan. Just, just go ahead and say it. We go, <laughs> yeah, to that's Leviathan. what I did. Or Honestly, <laughs> escalation protocol is best. I did EP too, but I was having bed armored, yeah. uh, um, 
what do you call it? Ammo drops with EP. Oh, so that's yeah. why I went to the Leviathan. Yeah. That's, yep. And I'll be honest, I'm uh, I'm enjoying the Black Armory it's just every every day more and more. Like mm-hmm. at the beginning, I was like, okay, okay, okay. But then I'm like, I know what you guys are doing, and I really, I really like this. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. much preferred this way of rolling out content. I'm gonna play the Forge and all that stuff way more than I'm gonna go back to that new planet that they introduced or that new strike or even that new Crucible map. I'll uh, play the Forge as long as the content drops or as long as the weapon and armor drops are interesting. But the Forge mode itself, it's not a horde mode like they are kind of no, hinting at. I wanted to talk about that last week because <laughs> I really hate how they, they they will almost every single piece of content that comes out where it's like you're killing a lot of enemies. are like, it's a horde mode style. No, just stop it. They use language just, that has meaning. <laughs> Yes, and just stop using horde mode to describe any mode that. And describes, maybe forge. Like, has, maybe the word forge. Like it's just. <laughs> yes, you're killing a lot of things, but it's not a horde mode. It doesn't. It's not. Go on forever, and I, I feel like as long as they keep using the word horde mode, people are going to get really pissed off when it's not it's that. True. It's yeah. problematic. It is. Um. So I I just want to second that. I think it, I think the way they've approached this with like weekly content drops is a good way of doing it. I I do like that. I like that there's always going to be something to look forward to essentially every week. And they said in the vid doc how there's always something each week, something new is rolling out. And it looks like they want to roll out content for every week for until September, essentially. So I'm I'm definitely on board with that. And I like yeah. the forges. I like the idea. Just like you said, it's a it's an interesting bounty where. You get this stuff, you have to go do things in the world, collect things, um, you know, like forging your weapon. It's it's a little, you know, it's, it's a bit of a stretch to call that forging your weapon because it's essentially a bounty. But like that's, you know, that, that's the idea behind it. So I do like that. And I like how somewhat the forge experience is kind of mindless. Maybe the other forges are going to have more mechanics, but let's just assume that's going to be ball chucking into the center, which is fun. Yep. I like that. I, I like ball checking. It's, yeah. it's better than Escalation <laughs> Protocol and Blindwell, in my opinion. Where yeah. oh, I just disagree. I think Escalation Protocol. Escalation is Protocol event. set the bar for me, for for sure. Yeah. But um, with that said, the problem that we've had and the the what I experienced was it took me seven hours to get something new. Yeah. In this like the first new thing, yeah, right? It took me seven hours and. I don't, There's nothing new with the vendors. There's nothing so that's, new. So that's what I'm saying. I don't mind like yeah. I don't mind regrinding the same content. I don't mind going to the same planetary destinations. I don't mind going for powerful engrams to get light drops. But when the drops themselves are the exact same items I've been getting for the past few months or possibly the whole year, then that creates a bland experience because it's just a number being associated next to it with the exact same weapon or with like a slightly different role that I've probably already seen before because I've already gotten a bunch of drops with it. The thing that uh, I I think people are blending Black Armory and Season of the Forge together and they need a my criticisms with the way they've rolled this out is that Season of the Forge doesn't really feel like anything new aside from some pinnacle weapons being added and the um, the ranks being reset like they needed new vendor weapons 100 percent new vendor new crucible. You know, like no new strikes and uh, no new maps for Crucible like that. Like, it'd be nice to have that stuff, but still, it's OK if I'm grinding some of the same content, but not having anything new in the open world drops or like just very little new stuff makes it come across as bland. And it's like, so you're only going to the forge, which you have to spend seven hours to get to to get one new piece of weapon. And the machine gun's amazing. Do not get me wrong. I freaking love that machine gun. I love yeah. busting it out. I love getting different rolls on it. That is super cool. I really like that. Seven hours of the same stuff they've already gotten in the past few months is not cool to get to that point. I think that's the biggest problem I've seen so far is that you when you download it, you're you're so looking forward to playing some new content. Right. And then you make that realization, oh shit, it's gonna be I've got like five or six, seven hours worth of just straight up grinding, power level grinding to do before I can access that new content. Now, they address this in some ways. Though, they did. Right? They did. Right. They and lowered so, the the power level of the forge <clears throat> by five power level. 
five light level power level. Yep. So um, is that now six twenty five? Yeah, it yeah. maxes out yeah. at six twenty five. But yeah. Once so once you're on power level, like it's a breeze. It is not difficult. Even at six ten, I think it's pretty doable for a, a whole fire team. Like you can definitely do mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I mean, I went in solo last night and did like three, and I was think I was six ten in there, and it was just like just as easy as with a group. Yeah. I think uh, somebody said in chat that there's like seven new weapons in the forge, and again, there's like there's there's new roles, there's a, a few new perks in there. Which yeah, I like that stuff. I like the fact like the forge itself seems like a cool experience. I, I like the concept of getting the bounties. Yeah. I like the the different things associated with it. I like the look of the weapons, all that. That is great. That's great stuff. But when you pull back and look at season of the forge, like the season, like this is seasonal content. Mm-hmm. It's a looter shooter. I feel like I'm getting the same weapons. Because I with the way Bungie advertised it too, it's like it they were advertising like they would advertise a DLC in the past, right? It's like they had the same kind of lead up. They didn't do the live stream, but they, you know, they had trailers and like you kind of got a feeling like, okay, we're gonna get like a you know, a thing here, right? And I I, I disagree. I, yeah. I feel yeah. like they were pretty they articulated pretty clearly what Black Army was gonna be. I think our we ex- our expectations were the what what was off. Like okay. we personally brought something else to it and read what they said differently. That's true, Pope. Yeah. I, I feel like and, and that's part of that's part of us adjusting to a new way that they're gonna roll out content. Um for me having you guys you know hit your head against this block right this power level block i was like crap man <laughs> if you guys are hitting this hard man i get i get like 5 hours to play a week i'm like i'm not going to see the forge for another like <laughs> month man this is going to suck and so um but it was really good to see here that bungie's putting in some like catch up mechanics for power level and um yeah. you know they're looking at creative ways of people that are behind to get caught up but i was uh, why do you guys think more frequently yeah, yeah, yeah why do you think they didn't do a soft cap raise not sure i think that would have made sense that would have really helped people that were lagging a bit behind to catch up to forge level much faster because it wouldn't have made a difference to super hardcore grinders, right? It, it, we wouldn't no, have no. seen anything from that. So I think that would make that's kind of the best of both worlds. People who grind really hard are still going to continue doing that. Yeah. And then ones that are a bit behind get that little bit of help. So um, I feel like that's something they might do in the future, Briar, honestly. Because they clearly... This is a very experimental content drop, right? They were like, okay, we think this is what you guys... We, here you go. <laughs> and then they're like, <laughs> okay... We understand we did this part not great. You guys want to get into content much Turns faster. out people, when new content drops, people want to they be want able to play, want to play new content. You know what I thought of too? I was so, like, people like, you know, with streaming, it's different because you're you're live and you're like, all right, I guess we can't do this right now. So we're just going to do this, this, and this for a little while and then we'll get to it eventually. But I was thinking of people who like are more in the YouTube world who were like planning these videos mm-hmm. out and they were like, all right, we're going to have this video today and we're going to do the Forge today. And then they were like, Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're like <laughs> I can't do that today. Right. Um. I mean, I I like the forge. I I haven't completed my first weapon yet. I'm almost there. But I think when people like hear season, like they just want to know there's going to be like longevity to it because yeah. they hear like season yeah. is like oh a season that's like a couple of months. So yeah. they want they don't want to see something and be like this is it. This is all I can do. They want to be like okay, what's coming next? Like what do I have to look forward to like in the next upcoming weeks? And I yeah. like that progression system where it's like you know similar to monster hunter like you were saying before like monster hunter would always be like all right there's gonna be a new monster next week and then in two weeks there's gonna be this monster and then three weeks there's gonna be this monster it's like it's nice to have like things like spread out instead of just like chunks and Mm -hmm. then like it won't be anything for like six more months i like the way that they're approaching this i think based on just being from a perspective from a sideline perspective and watching all you guys my friends you know hit this stuff and hit this cap and the disappointment in it um, it, it, and I read on Twitter as well. So this isn't like a unique thought of mine, but having people being able to access that new content or at least Ada's bounties, I think would have with it w- relatively quickly would have, um, 
would have been cool because even if you're going into the first and second level and then you're hitting that level cap with the boss you're still yeah. getting those bounties done in drops from that right mm -hmm. and so you're 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 progressing towards it in a, in a certain way even though you're failing maybe at the boss you're still pushing against something and getting rewards that will allow you while you're doing it to get that that level up so that's one way of looking at it but honestly i, th I think the real crux is that uh the the pathway to get to the forge is identical yeah. to what you were doing two three four weeks ago there's yeah. nothing different about it there's no new drops there's no new armor like there's no new perks in the world drops it is the exact same stuff that eventually gets you then to the forge because the forge itself is not a problem the forge is actually really cool going through those bounties like once you get like the weapons are awesome doing the actual process of the forge is a fun experience that Oh, is not an issue in my opinion and i think a lot of people are confusing yeah. this with well i couldn't play the forge so therefore the forge is flawed or the, <laughs> the way they did that it's like no 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 the forge is awesome and this whole way that they're going to do the content's awesome but they didn't refresh the world drops and this game is a looter shooter if i jump into destiny and i'm using the same exact way like i i want to not have to use my midnight coup anymore but it's the best gun for the job of a 150 kinetic can cannon I want that to be replaced. I want to find that like either out in the world or one of these forgers, something like that. It, when I look at season, the forge, it doesn't feel like it's shaping up to be that way just yet. I understand. Yeah. Um, I think, I think for, so the way that I see it and how we're going to be doing this, and I hope Bungie is doing what I'm thinking and hoping they're going to do is they made forsaken this like crazy, amazing, awesome experience. Every, everything in forsaken. I love doing, I love going mm. to the dreaming city. I love doing all the stuff that's in forsaken. I still enjoy that. And we're playing forsaken black armory. We're not just playing destiny Two black armory. We're playing destiny Two forsaken black armory. Mm -hmm. So it's just adding that little bit onto forsaken. So forsaken still that base experience, but then here's this extra thing for you to do. And what I'm really hoping Bungie does is they, with these content drops to expand the end game, they reuse the forge. So I hope when we go to Joker's Wild, they're like, okay, there's now new weapons for you guys to forge in the forge as well. And then yeah. when we go to Penumbra, it's oh, like, hey, here's cool. this other thing in Gambit. I'm hoping that they're building things with these content drops that they can reuse because that is much more realistic from a video game company where things are very expensive. Sure. If yeah. they can use that forge and like add new armor, add new weapons, add ornaments, stuff like and that. And add I'm challenges, really Watts, that. right? Like add add yeah. all sorts of things. So you're getting into, um, you know, this next season or this next uh, area of Destiny and you're going to go back into the forge, but this time it's going to be the forge with a little twist, right? It could be part of that next design. So you're, the elements of the competing with the boss are going to be a little different. There's going to be something in there that's going to change the way you approach the problem. Um, Although I, I, don't know. I will agree with Tefty that I, it would have been nice even to get like new ornaments and there's new right. ornaments for Gambit weapons in Eververse, <laughs> but it would have been yeah. nice to do like, do these that you like you check out your dreaming city armor you're like oh there's an ornament i have to go do this challenge in the dreaming city and you will passively be working on that while you're doing there, dreaming city and raid and stuff how how often are ornaments available from non eververse sources i don't think they last are year anymore. they last year they there did it trials. for i think every season oh, and didn't um, there was they trials did, and there was the mm -hmm. faction faction rally and uh Redrix, I Redrix had no uh, even uh, uh, oh, the crucible great. had them. That's true. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty much. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you I see, like, like every... they, there's none of that yeah. in season of the forge. It's just, it's the same stuff yeah. that we know yeah. of that we know of. Like I, you're, I you're, we're, we're, we're two to two and a half days in. Right. Yeah. Maybe it unlocks, Actually, maybe people finish the raid and it does something again. I don't know. I, I like possible. that mechanic a lot. Mm -hmm. I really hope that does happen again. And I think that like, you know, with the whole forge thing, I agree with Watts. Like they, I feel like in Destiny overall, like in Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, they have like a habit of making this really cool thing, but then it's only used for that one little period of time and then you kind of never yeah. use it again. So it would be awesome if like they kept these an integral part of the game along all the seasons, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, of course, it's the fabled Black Armory. I would hope that it that it becomes <laughs> yeah. part. Like they, they, got, they got Golden Age tech, man. <laughs> this Come on. Is, this is something that they like all of the Golden Age tech in the span of like 
three weeks. Th- this is- I do think it's really funny how they were like, the Black Army, it's so mysterious. Where could it be located? And then it was like, right here, <laughs> yeah, next to us this whole it. time. It's been underneath the tower. Ada's <laughs> been in our <laughs> basement. <laughs> this whole time, Ada's been hanging out in the sewer. Yeah, those weird noises you heard down there. That's that why she's was so just cranky. Yeah. Like, let's Which, be honest, she's cranky because she's been stuck in the sewer. By the way, the the cutscene when you're talking to Ada for the first time oh is probably God. one of the funniest things. Where she's like, "You have no place here. How did you get here?" And you like, you hold up the yeah, yeah thing and like, I got this. Like, okay, that's fine. You can be here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you got oh, the, the you got thing. the invitation. Yeah. The one thing that allows you here, you have it. You so have it. I, I would love for things to change and for us to just have been like, oh, they were planning on changing this with the raid. I don't think they're going to refresh I all don't. this armor and loot. Yeah, well, it's after, I'm scared for the next year because yeah, the annual too. pass, if the annual pass is we are grinding the same stuff we started Forsaken with, but we just get these like once a week little tiny content drops. But essentially, we're we're still doing the Dreaming City bounties. We're still going into Leviathan to shoot guys in the head. We're still, you know, like if if this is the next year, I'm a little scared. Like if we're not going to get any new patrols for a year, if we're not going to get any new destinations, no new strikes. Like I don't need new strikes. I'm a little bored with strikes. Like a forge is kind of the same as a strike, but no new mm-hmm. crucible maps. Like where is this guy stuff going to? Is it going to pop up during a season? Like, well, the, I kind of want to know dungeon. more about might, what, what to expect. Actually. There's going to be a new dungeon, and there's going to be – that each week is going to bring something new, and some of these weeks are going to be less exciting than others. Like, I think this is essentially setting up the expectations for us because we saw a season of The Forge. We're like, oh, man, this is the beginning of the season pass. Things are changing. Then it's like, here is one activity and a light-level boost. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, Next week we get something else, man. Like next well, week. Well, tomorrow we get something. We get a new forge. I'm and, tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. I'm and then yeah. like two days like later, three days later, we get something else. Also, can we just talk about the secret real quick? Hmm. So sure. I don't know how many of you guys have been to the forge and wait, wait, wait. held Do up I... the machine gun. No, this is him. <laughs> it's no oh, spoiler. Okay. <laughs> hold the machine gun and ADS through it. There's blue symbols all oh, over the forge. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard about yeah, that. The secrets, Literally yeah. throughout the forge. And then there's also like a map thing in there where you look at it and it's mm-hmm. just like simple, 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 simple. Yeah. So there's a secret there that we don't know about. We do know about the box. We figured out how to do the box, which I just want to say what I, I know. Like. We so I know we saw the little <laughs> ball boys and we were like, ball boys have a secret. <laughs> this this, this, this seems like it's boys. something. <laughs> Of course, it's ball boys. <laughs> you see a ball. Listen, this is this is going forward in Destiny. If you see anything that is a ball, it's mm-hmm. probably something. It's probably something. Destiny something. Yeah. loves balls. Season of the balls. Season mm-hmm. of the balls. Year of the balls. Yeah. Two years. The ago. Destiny experience. Actually, I think we. There's found many secrets. The title of this podcast. Season of the balls. <laughs> I don't want to restrict the balls to one season. I feel like I'm this. excited to <laughs> spread them out throughout all seasons. Yeah, it's Not more of a way of life, the, the balls, balls, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I am excited to find balls out what these secrets mean, what yeah. they lead to, what the hell the symbols are all about. I'm excited to see the new forge. Like, is it going to be different? Even if it's not different, just having an, a, diff- a different arena could actually really change the way that the Forge plays. Because if it's like, you know, those things that you jump on, or maybe that's more like vertical, that would completely change how you play the mm-hmm. Forge. Yeah. If you throw a ball and it just goes off the edge. And you- Please, no platforming. Never. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Poor warlock. Yeah. yeah. Spoken like a true warlock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only time a warlock ever sweats is when they see a jumping puzzle. Oh yeah, with the, the in the last wish with that universe. like in that jumping puzzle area with the with the platforms that turn. They're like Oh yeah. They're always like, "Oh, Victoria's going to get through this. All right, everyone, you know, go get a drink yeah, water." It's, it's not even that the, the warlock jump is that bad. It's that when you fail, you will be slowly floating to your death. For <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like There's you no just like, just like, like oh, oh, shame no. float. If yeah. I'm a hunter, I'm just like, "Oh, I messed up i fell down a warlock it's like mm, no. yeah. okay. <laughs> i feel like you're really like pushing it like the whole yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. oh man um i i like the way that the forge is rolling out in front of me i mm-hmm. I, I appreciate the changes they made um i was able to complete the the machine gun tonight right before the podcast so nice. i think nice. three hours of gameplay so a um, little different than your experience because i followed behind you after the uh, adjustment right and um, it was uh, it was great. I mean, somebody had already figured out all the strats for me. I got to watch all the YouTube <laughs> videos, you know. Which one did you use? Did you stand on the rock or did you stand back in the tunnel, like in the cave? Uh, back in the cave. 
or back where the rock the is, right? It, I was cliff. The, cliff. the cliff. The cliff. Yeah. yeah okay. So I was with the uh, peanut butter and toast from WTF Canadian mm-hmm. Nation, and they're like, they're already six, what, 15, 620. I don't know. They're already pretty high. And so when I jumped in, I was 600. So I, I, nice. I, I was fortunate that I had, you know, friends in good places, but the, um, that was a fun, that was a fun little experience. And I'm, I'm hoping that each forge gets increasingly more difficult. And oh, I hope so. That'd be great. I hope that, I hope the last one's like above our level and we're just like, like it, cool. it's like 660 that we just yeah. can't get to that level. 660 yeah. boss. I feel like they made, a little, gonna try. they made a slight misstep on how they introduced this idea yeah. to us. And that's, and I'm with you, Tepti. They really should have refreshed the vendor, mm-hmm. you know, stuff. Yeah. You know, maybe they're going to do that with the dawning. Who knows? One of the most exciting you things. Talk about that <laughs> one of the most exciting things about Destiny is yeah. when like there's a new refresh and then everybody goes through and tries to figure out what's the best because the, the, yeah. the meta shifts. There's things that yeah. change. Yeah, and I feel like in the past year and a few months, they've gone completely away from that. Like they're, they don't, it, it, it feels like the designers aren't interested in having that happen to the game anymore. Um, well, I mean, Forsaken changed things, but like, it seems like they want to keep this whole, the loot pool the same with a few adjustments and a few additions here and there. And it's more like specific selected pieces of gear. Like right now you can get the machine gun and the auto rifle. That's essentially what's new this week. Like in Destiny One, they kept the old stuff, but they kept like adding to the loop yeah. pool over the course of a year, right? And in this one, it doesn't. They added a little bit, but it's so it's so selectively small. It from what we can see, it's the forges, these three new foundries, and the rake. Well, there's exotics so as I well. I think we are really used to getting content like Netflix drops content, where it's just <laughs> here yeah. it is, the entire right. season right there. Just take yeah. care of it. And we're getting a slower rollout over time, which I don't mind. So, like I see, I I, I, I totally, un- I t- Tefty, I, I I agree with you. Like not having new new stuff like right at the start, I, I agree. But I think given the way that we devour content, like it just maybe for the health of the game, it's better to slowly roll it out, which you know that isn't as interesting. Because a lot of us like to play the game and just get everything almost. I mean, if you look at the hot takes that are happening on Twitter and Reddit, those can't be good for the health of the game. Right? Uh, I don't really give a fuck about hot takes. Right <laughs> I mean, um, especially just I, I just really don't like, like when you got that much negativity surrounding the game like that can't be that can't be good for it. But you know what but, was funny, though, is that it was like first day. Everyone's like, bah, terrible. And then the yeah. next day, they're like. Okay. That always happens, though. Like it's, it's always, start, it's just always like, ah, and then it's like, I it's know. just an emotional reaction every time. We never. <laughs> I do agree. I, I was impressed that... with the the speed at which they reacted as well. Oh, it was yes. almost instant. That stuff is service side, like there's obviously, I see some people like, oh, but you you, you can't fix Tolesto. That's not a service side fix. It's totally different. The service side fix where they could just like bump down the level by five. That's something that they're trying to set up more often. So it's like they can pump something in there super difficult. Then if people are like, eh, needs to be a little less difficult, they can bring it down. They can bump it back up. So that's something that I think they're starting to work on more where they can Mm -hmm. fix those types of things quicker. So they can go a little bit more crazy because they can adjust it. Um, Yeah, I, I personally am enjoying the Forge. I have five weapons from the Forge. I have the rocket, the machine gun, the pulse rifle, rocket? the auto rifle. Jeez, Ooh, how's the pulse rifle? I mean, SMG. Yeah. The pulse rifle is actually really good. It's the uh, swift ride, but the forge oh, version. Oh, these are the augmented ones. You're talking yeah. About. yeah, yeah, okay. but they're actually really good. Mm-hmm. Like the good versions. Yeah. Like the rocket, I use the rocket in the raid because it has cluster bombs on it. Um, so I'm really happy with that. And then I got a really good SMG, and the pulse rifle isn't best perks ever it has rangefinder and head seeker but i was using it in crucible and it just it's super smooth it's like the old school kind of hawk saw feel to mm-hmm. it it's just i really love that smooth pulse rifle that just kills things so yeah 
auto oh rifle that you get as a power drop. It's a brand new model. I think it's a brand new model. It it's got a, a brand new sound. The ringing it. nail. Oh, oh, yeah, the, the, sound, ringing nail. the sound. The sound design on these weapons. It reminds oh, me a little of Rise of Iron. The, remember those mm -hmm. weapons that had the fur on them and made really brutal sounds? Oh, yeah. Iron oh, oh Iron man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. I love that gun. And I don't. I have crap perks on it. I still love using it. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, um, can we get into... I mean, we're starting to talk about how Bungie's approaching like some of the challenges from Black Armory and what they're doing forward. 